Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to go through a stepwise solution of a numerical on analysis of trust using method of joints. So directly, we'll move on to the numerical. So the statement goes like this: Determine the forces in each member of a simple truss, loaded and supported, as shown in figure below using method of joints. So this is the mechanism given. Uh, so here we can see the truss is loaded by two external forces, one at A joint, other at B joint. Uh, having a magnitude of 20 newton and 10 newton respectively whereas it is been supported at e joint by a roller support and at c joint by a hinge support so we we'll move on to its solution so this uh, the first step is to draw the body of entire truss so we have the entire truss in front of us now to draw its f body we have to make it free from all the connections and supports so we can see here two supports one at E and one at C so while making it free we have to replace it by its support reactions so a roller support carries or has one support reaction so while drawing its sub body you have to replace it by a support reaction so in this case it is in vertical direction and as it is applied at E uh, we will be calling it, a, calling it as REY that, then at C point uh, we have a hinge support so a hinge support carries one vertical reaction and one horizontal reaction so a vertical reaction will call it as RCY and horizontal reaction will call it as RCX now this is how our FBD is ready now once the FBD is ready then our next time is to apply the conditions of equilibrium now this FBD as it is forming a non-concurrent force system we have three conditions of equilibrium summation of fx equal to zero summation of fy equal to zero and movement about any point equal to zero so we'll apply the first one so once applying the first one we are getting the equation as minus rcx equal to zero so there is only one force in x direction in the entire everybody of the truss so from this what we are getting is rcx is equal to zero newton then we'll move on to the next summation of fy equal to zero so from this the equation that we are getting is REY plus RCY minus 20 minus 10 equal to 0 we will call this as first equation then we will move on to the next summation of moment about any point equal to 0 so here you can take summation of moment about any point but here I have chosen C according to the convenience suitability and to reduce the calculations so and I have assumed anticlockwise as positive so the equation goes like this 20 newton force it is creating a anti-clockwise effect around c so plus 20 into its perpendicular distance about c is 5 plus 2.5 in all 7.5 then this 10 newton force it is again creating an anti-clockwise effect around c so plus 10 into its perpendicular distance about c is 2.5 then this rey is creating a clockwise effect around c so minus rey into 10 and then RCY and RCX are passing through C point so they will create no moment about a zero moment about C so this is the equation that we are getting that we have to equate with zero and in this particular equation the only unknown is REY so solving we are getting REY as 17.5 Newton by backward substitution by substituting it in the first equation we will be getting RCY as 12.5 Newton so this is how we have got all the support reactions now the second step is to identify the zero force members now to identify zero force members we have to go through certain conditions and by eye observation you have to identify the zero force members so these are the three sets of conditions that we should look into in a particular truss to identify the zero force members so the first set of conditions uh, tells us that if at a particular joint there are only three members acting and out of that three mem and out of that three members if two members are collinear and then there is no external force acting at that particular joint then the third member is a zero force member so there is a second scenario in the same set where at a joint there are only three members acting out of that two are collinear so naturally the third one will be a zero force member similarly at this particular joint also there are uh, three members acting out of that these two are collinear so the third one will be a zero force member 
Now the second set of conditions tell us that if at a particular joint there are only two members acting and no external forces acting then in that case both the members are zero force members. Similarly you can see other scenario where at a particular joint only two members are acting and nothing else. In that case these two are zero force members. The third set of conditions tells us that now actually this set is somewhat similar to the first one. If at a particular joint there are only two members acting and then there is a external force applied which is collinear to any one of the members then the other member is a zero force member. So there is one more scenario where at a particular joint only two members are acting and there is a roller support and a roller support has one reaction coming out of it. So this reaction is form, uh, is collinear with this one. So this other uh, member is a zero force member. So now looking into this particular mechanism, none of the conditions are satisfying here and that's why there is no zero force member observed in this particular mechanism. So we'll move on to the next step. So next step is to find out a suitable joint and draw its FBD in order to find out the forces in each member of a truss. So while selecting a particular joint, we have to check out that that joint should not have more than two unknowns. At most, it should be having two unknowns. So we'll check out the suitability of this joints. So if we'll be selecting a joint here in all, we have three members acting and an external force out of this we have three unknown members so we can't go with a joint so now we'll check out the feasibility for b joint at b joint same case we can see uh, three unknown members and an external known force so as we have three unknown things we can't go or proceed with b joint so we'll check out the feasibility for c at c we have only two unknowns and two known reactions so yes we can go with c joint so we have got a point or a joint with which we can proceed but still we'll check out the feasibility for the other two also whether we can proceed with the other two or not so at d joint we have one two three four unknowns so we can't go with d joint but at e joint if we'll check out we have one known reaction and two unknown members so yes here as there are only two unknown members we can go with E joint also. So here we have a choice either we can proceed with E or we can proceed with C. So in this case I am going to proceed with E joint. So once you have selected a particular joint the next thing that you have to do is that you have to draw the F body of that particular joint. So for drawing that F body I have drawn X axis then I will be drawing Y axis and then you have to make it free from all the connections. The, uh, the origin of this particular axis you can call it as E point and then you have to uh, draw the FBD of that particular joint. So for drawing the FBD uh, we have to replace the members by the forces. So at E joint we have two members connected AE and ED. So from member a you have to show a force coming out a force of f e a so you can call it as force f e a you can also call it as force e a e also it doesn't matter both are same so the only thing is that while showing the force you have to show it in uh, it to be in tensile in nature so acting away from the point similarly you have to show a force e d which would be acting away from the joint towards positive x-axis but before that we'll be also requiring the angle made by this FEA with respect to x-axis for the calculations so to find out this angle we can consider a triangle AOE in this particular triangle uh, to get the angle AEO angle AEO uh, by using this formula tan inverse of AO by EO you'll be getting the required angle so AO is 5 and EO is 2.5 putting out the values you are getting the angle as 63.43 so now though we have got this angle AO as 63.43 even angle AD, ADE also will be 63.43 angle BDC also will be the same angle BCD angle DAB and angle DBA all will be equal to 63.43 because of symmetry 
so now uh, we have drawn the force coming out of member a and its angle 63.43 and then a force coming out of member ed f ed and then lastly we have to show the support known support reaction as it is acting along positive y axis so this is how we have completed our f bd our f bd is ready so once our f bd is ready and as it is forming a concurrent force system we will be having two conditions of equilibrium summation of fx equal to 0 and summation of fy equal to 0 so the summation of fx equal to 0 gives us f ed plus f ea cos of 63.43 equal to 0 we will call it as first equation and summation of fy equal to 0 is giving us uh, rey plus fea sine of 63.43 equal to 0 now in this equation rey is known rey is 17.5 so only unknown is FEA so solving this we are getting FEA as minus 19.55 Newton so here we are getting a negative value of force it tells us that the assumed nature is reverse of uh, the nature of this particular force is reverse of the assumed nature so we assumed uh, the nature uh, to be tensile so this particular nature is compressive uh, the nature of this force is compressive so uh, after putting this value in equation 1 you will be getting FED so FED is coming out to be 8.74 and as it is positive means the assumed nature is correct in this case and we are getting the nature of FED force along member ED as 8.74 Newton so already by considering a single joint we have got the forces in member ed and ea so now to find out the other uh, members the forces in other members we have to select the other joints so from this e joint what you have got is force fed and force fea now when you will be considering joint G, uh, D, this force that you have got along member ED, here for E joint you consider it to be moving in positive x axis, while considering D joint we have to show it moving along negative x axis because for D joint you have to show it tensile. Similarly, the force FEA that you have shown moving in the first quadrant for joint E that you have to show moving to in third quadrant in opposite direction for joint A. Now to find out the forces in the members we have to select uh, other joint which has not more than two unknowns. So now if we we'll check out A joint initially we had three unknown members but now as from E joint we have got this member in force EA or AE we can select A joint as now currently we have only two unknowns in this AB and AD. So now we'll select A joint. So once we select A joint, we have to draw its FBD. So this is what the FBD of A appears to be. At A point, we have a known load that is of 20 Newton moving towards a negative Y axis. Then we have a force along member AE, which already we have determined from the first joint that is E joint FA as 19.5 Newton making angle of 63.43 then along AD we have force FAD making angle of 63.43 and then along member AB we have force FAB so this is the body of joint A which is again a concurrent force system so applying the conditions of equilibrium this is what we are getting summation of fx equal to 0 we are getting as FAB plus FAD cos of 63.43 plus FA uh, sorry minus FAE cos of 63.43 and we will term it as first equation then second condition of equilibrium summation of FY equal to 0 gives us minus 20 minus FAE sine of 63.43 minus FAD sine of 63.43 and in this particular equation the only unknown is FAD as FAE is known 19.55 so FAD comes out to be minus 2.81 Newton it tells that it is compressive in nature substituting it back in first equation 
then the only unknown in this equation will be fab and you are getting it as minus 7.48 newton so again fab also is coming compressive in nature so this is how we have got in all four members first two from a joint and then from a joint we have got fad and that force fad when it will be considered d joint you have to show it in opposite direction and then you have got FAB which you have to show it in opposite direction for B joint so now we already got four members still three members uh, forces in three members you have to determine so for that now you have a choice you can go for B also because only two unknowns are there now at D also there are two unknowns and at C also there are two unknowns so a choice is yours uh, you can go with any of the joints to determine so here I am going to go with C joint so once we'll go with C joint and we'll draw its FBD, you'll be getting force along member CD and force along member BC. So force along member CD will come around 6.24 Newton and force along member BC will come around 13.97 Newton negative. So nature is compressive. And then the only member remaining is BD so you can go either with D joint or B joint so if you go with B joint you'll be getting the force along member BD by considering its uh, FBD so it is coming around 2.78 Newton so the only joint that we have not considered is D joint so even if we have not uh, used it we can use it just to verify the things verify the calculations so you can even go for D joint and check whether summation of Fx is coming equal to 0 or not and check whether summation of fi is coming equal to zero or not so if it is coming equal to zero means all your calculations were correct so this is how we have find out all the forces in the members seven members now the next last step is to draw the force table so the force table includes a member and a force as main headings and then the force you have to subdivide into magnitude and nature so in all we have seven members with us a b B C C D D E A E A D and B D that is what you have to represent here then go with uh, the magnitudes check the magnitudes so member A B uh, the force along member A B observed was minus 7.48 Newton but while noting it down in the force table write it down as a positive value so you have to write it down magnitude in magnitude as 7.48 Newton but as its value is negative write down its nature as compressive so that is what is rightly done here magnitude 7.48 and as it was negative so nature is compressive similarly find out the or note down the uh, forces that you have got in the other members of the truss so f b c you have got 13.97 negative so in magnitude write down positive value 13.97 but nature compressive whereas if you'll check out c d you got plus 6.24 so you have to write down 6.24 and its uh, nature to be tensile so this is how uh, we have to note down the things so similarly member D uh, you have got 8.7 for positive so its nature you are written tensile we have got member A uh, force to be minus 19.55 so we have written magnitude plus 19.55 its nature is compressive member AD we got minus 2.81 so uh, magnitude is 2.81 and nature is compressive and member BD we got magnitude 2.78 positive that's why its nature is tensile so this is how we have uh, determined all the forces in members of the truss thanks for watching the video